Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, last spring, our community experienced the tragic loss of five youths to suicide. No one knows the cause, but this tragedy has opened a new conversations with local youth about the challenges they are facing. As I have been meeting with youth, they told me about the significant struggles with bullying. This week is Bullying Awareness and Prevention Week. It's a time to speak about the bullying and talk about how we can stop it in our communities. Bullying is happening in our schools, but it doesn't end when the school is over. Cyberbullying follows the kids home. As many of you have told me, people may not think words have an impact online, but they do. People in Oxford are working to create a more inclusive community where bullying doesn't have a place through campaigns like Sea of Pink. They know that bullying doesn't show strength and it isn't acceptable in any form. It takes a strong person to reach out to people in need and build them up instead of breaking them down. If you see something, say something and do something to help those who are being bullied. Reach out to those who are being bullied and be an encouragement for them. You never know the struggles they may be facing. I encourage everyone to be someone and take a stand against bullying. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. It's my pleasure to uh, use my member statement to recognize this year's winner of the Charlie Brooks Labour Community Service Award. As you know, Speaker, the Labour community has been the backbone of Windsor and Essex County for generations. Each year, the United Way of Windsor-Essex, along with the Windsor and District Labour Council, honours one local activist with the Charles E. Brooks Labour Service Award. And it gives me great pleasure and pride to also honour this year's recipient, Brian Brown, here today in the Legislature. Uh, Brian, Brian began his career in 1977 at the University of Windsor as a sessional instructor and shortly thereafter became involved with the, the Windsor University Faculty Association. He then played a key role in leading the fight to gain rights and benefits for sessional instructors under the collective agreement. Over the years, Brian has also served on numerous committees, including the Windsor University Faculty Association, the Ontario Confederation of University Faculty Associations, as well as the Canadian Association of University Teachers. Brian has also volunteered his time as a member of the Art Gallery of Windsor Planning Committee, the Windsor Endowment for the Arts Board. He's been a staunch supporter of the United Way by championing uh, the university campaign, but also as a member of the United Way Community Impact Council. Brian exemplifies the spirit of Charlie Brooks uh, through union and social activism. And we want to thank and congratulate Brian also, I would be remiss, uh, and I'd like to send a special thanks to Maureen Curtis of the United Way of Windsor-Essex. Maureen works hard every year to organize this year's event, uh, and each year is always better than last. Thanks, Maureen, and congratulations to Brian. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Barrie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I would like to recognize an important co company in my riding of Barrie, Innovative Automation. This manufacturer of robotics and assembly automation technology was formed in 1989 and has since become a success story and a model for other businesses to follow. IA consistently demonstrate their dedication to their employees. This year alone, they have invested over $150,000 in new training initiatives. They also believe in allowing their employees to grow in the company, including through the hiring of high school co-op students who they mentor through their post-secondary training and apprenticeships until they are fully qualified innovators. In recent years, they have partnered with companies like Tesla Motors and Faraday Futures, which has allowed them to grow. In the last two years alone, they have doubled both their production and their workforce, all while being recognized as one of Canada's safest employers. Last Tuesday, I was pleased to join President Steve Loftus and his daughter Stephanie and his other employees to, at gro the groundbreaking ceremony of Innovative Automation's new 62,000-square-foot facility, which they plan to expand by a further 24,000 uh, square feet within five years. In an age where even high-tech manufacturing jobs are going overseas and on-the-job training is becoming increasingly rare, I'm proud that my city is the home to this innovative business, which continues to thrive and provide good-paying, much-needed jobs for the constituents in Barrie. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Simcoe Gray. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it's a real honour for me to rise today to tell the House about Mr. Mervyn Denny, a much-loved and respected resident of my riding of Simcoe Gray. 
Sadly, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Denny passed away at Stevenson Memorial Hospital in Alliston on Sunday, October 23rd. He was 87 years old. Mr. Speaker, over the years, Mr. Denny invested so much of his time in our community, and he did so in many different ways. From 1960 to 1961, Mervyn was the reeve of Essa Township. In a story on Simcoe.com, current Essa Mayor Terry Doddwell described Mr. Denny this way, and I quote, he was one of the good ones. And Mr. Speaker, I certainly agree with that sentiment. Mr. Dowdo also said Mervyn, of Mervyn that he was one of the guys that whenever people moved to town and needed a hand, Mervyn was always there. He was probably one of the most respected people in town." End of quote. For many years, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Denny served on Essa's Committee of Adjustment and Planning Board, providing sage advice on matters of local importance. He was a lifetime member of the Orange Lodge in Baxter. When I was first running for the nomination for the PC candidacy in Simcoe Gray in 1990, Mervyn was a great supporter. He was one of those few people at that time who believed in me as a 26-year-old, and for that I am forever grateful. I remember his tenacity, his energy, his great humour, and the tremendous respect that the people had as he took me in Essa Township from farm to farm to farm to farm to farm to farm to farm, Mr. Speaker. Our condolences go out to his wife of 63 years, Rogan, and to his three children, Mr. Speaker. Wonderful. Thank you. Your member famous the member from Windsor to come see. Good afternoon, Speaker. Last night I had the opportunity to attend a private screening of an upcoming television show on life saving organ transplants. Dr. David Suzuki was the host. The program will be seen on the CBC this Thursday night at 8 o'clock. I recommend it to all members of the House. The bottom line for me, Speaker, is we're just not doing enough when it comes to signing up to be organ donors. One organ donor can save as many as eight lives, and tissue donations can benefit more than 75 people. Surveys show more than 90 per cent of Canadians support organ and tissue donation, but for whatever reason, fewer than 20 per cent of us have actually made plans to do so. Every year, more than 1,600 people are added to the waiting list for transplants, and the sad facts are too many Canadians are dying every year on that waiting list because not enough people have registered to be donors. Here in Ontario, we can register at beadonor.ca. Speaker, the nature of things on Thursday night is a behind-the-scenes look at an organ, organ transplant team at a hospital in Alberta. It's a very emotional experience. And I don't mind telling you, I had tears in my eyes several times while watching the preview at the ROM last night, as did the member from Nickel Belt. So talk to your family, talk to your friends, and register at beadonor.ca. Thank you. Further members, students, the member from Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This year marks the 175th anniversary of St. Paul Lamaru Anglican Church in my riding of Scarborough Agent Court. St. Paul Anglican Church has been serving their congregation since 1840, where the first Bishop of Toronto consecrated the church. Since then, St. Paul Lamaru Church has achieved many milestones. They are leaders in protecting the most vulnerable in our community. This includes the establishment of affordable seniors' housing on the church property, along with creation of St. Paul Lamaru Centre, established in 1978. For almost 40 years, the centre provides affordable, diverse care, services, and housing for seniors. Recently, St. Paul Lamaru Church has expanded their community outreach to involve youth in a music program. The original core program now pro it also includes a string ensemble, wind ensemble, a South Asian dance ensemble, and a children's choir. Mr. Speaker, the achievements and growth of St. Paul Lamaru Church and their continued community service is commendable. I would like to recognize Father Dean Mercer and his entire congregation for the tremendous work and the exceptional vision in service to the community. And I look forward to this Sunday service, where I will be joining the 11th Archbishop Colin Robert Johnson in celebrating St. Paul Lamaru Anglican Church's 175th anniversary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Wow. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Bramley Gore Malton. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I think it's fair to say that many Canadians are deeply troubled by the results of the U.S. election. The fact that someone could campaign on a message that was misogynistic, racist, xenophobic, that base was based on fear and division and could win was something that troubles all of us. I think it also points to a deeply flawed electoral system. The reality is that the majority of Americans didn't actually vote for Mr. Trump, but Mr. Trump now has won as the president-elect with all power. It shows that we really need to hold our federal government to account to ensure that we have a more just electoral system. And that's why we really need to work for having a proportional representational system in our politics. Uh, often we see that the, uh, Canada is influenced by the U.S. The U.S. is a larger country, and it often influences us. And it's troubling that that might influence uh, the climate in Canada to make it acceptable to be racist or xenophobic or misogynistic. And that's why many people in the States are now looking north to us for guidance. We can provide a vision where you can build a fair society that's not based on blaming other minorities, religious or otherwise. You can actually build a fair society by working together. So we need to show that leadership that a fair and just society is made more powerful and strong when we work together, when we work on inclusivity, that's where we come up with a more powerful and fair society. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Speaker. Today I stand alongside my colleagues as we wear purple to shine the light on the fact that November is Women's Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month. In light of this, I wish to take this opportunity to commend the Women's House in Kincardine, an organization that has been helping women and children in my riding for 30 years. For over the past three decades, the Women's House has helped over 15,000 women and 2,000 children escape abuse. Every year, they field over 4,000 calls, an alarming number. The Women's House is a significant operation that requires support on all levels in order to operate and offer these services. I have toured the Concarden facility and recognized immediately that this safe haven is so much more than accommodation. The vast supports offered to women and children is invaluable, and that's why I would like to thank everyone who supports Women's House. This past October, the Women's House hosted their annual gala in Concarden. It is their biggest fundraiser, and the event helps them help so many in our communities. I want to congratulate the Women's House not only on their 30 years of service, but also on their successful gala. This year, it raised a whopping $28,000, which will go towards helping the Women's House continue their efforts in making our community a safer place. I want to encourage everyone to wear a purple ribbon or clothing during the month of November to show support in ending violence against women and children to help make our province, country and world a better place to live. Thank you, Speaker. Further member statements, the member from Beaches East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to talk about a very unfortunate incident that happened in my riding of Beaches East York. Parents going to school yesterday morning came across a whole series of hateful posters posted around Stan Wadlow Park, and it was very disturbing to so many of them. And I don't want to spend any time dignifying the commentary was on clearly fueled, hate fueled by possibly Trump induced. But what I want to do is focus on the incredible community reaction to it. You know, local constituent Kevin Kerr immediately posted on Twitter. Joseph Travers puts it on Facebook group of our Woodbine Danforth Facebook group. And immediately all the residents started to rise up and go down. They found the posters. They dispatched the city staff. We went all over the community and they were ripped down and pulled down. I mean, it was so incredibly quick, the reaction of the community to take issue with the messaging that they were seeing on these posters, concerned both about what their children would be reading, what their children would be seeing, but they took action. I especially want to applaud Jen, Lo Jen Lees, who's an artist and a local high school student. She, a teacher, sorry, she has prepared a poster, an alternative poster, which has the words welcome and love in many, many different languages that she's going to be posting around all the community's uh, window fronts of the retail stores in my community and the Danforth East Community Association, which is also uh, taking this issue up so they can have a positive message to take back to the community about the inclusiveness of our country, of the kinds of values that we share, and as well as a local group called East Toronto Young Mothers. They made it their mission to make sure these posters did not last more than a few hours. Thank you, Speaker. I thank all members for their statements.